Hey, I'm back. My apologies. I'm using a capture program that, where I can only use 10 minutes at a time, so I'm actually going to try and speed through this a little bit, but this one I really want to explain and get in depth with. All right, so I have this right angle here. Um, this is representing 90 degrees, so if I rotate something 45 degrees, that means it's just going to go 45 of it, right? So not 90. 90, for instance, would be going all the way that way, creating a right angle from one spot to the other. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to make a circle, all right? This circle is an invisible circle, so to speak, and it represents nothing more than, let's get orange, represents nothing more than where you want your point to remain, okay? So keep in mind that this point here happens to be 5, 5. Now, the radius isn't 5. The radius would be, what, if this is 5, this is 5, this is 5 root 2, right? Um, this happens to be 5 root 2 units away from the center. Okay, so when I rotate, I want to keep this thing 5 root 2 units away from the center. So why don't I do this? I'm going to group these two things together so I can rotate them together. And I'm going to go and rotate this. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. That means that I do this rotation here. Here's 45 degrees. And boom, that's my new point. And what is that new point? Well, it looks like it's at about 0, 6, but really it's at 0, 5 root 2, right? So you'd probably have to label that coordinate point. What if I wanted to take it and go 90 degrees? Remember we talked about that. Well, whoops. Well, from here I'd go 45 and an even 90. So there's 90 degrees and there's a new point as well. So you have to be able to label these points and do all that. So you can't really do this, you know, on a piece of paper, do it like this, and hopefully they give you good enough um, rotation degrees so you kind of know what to do. But keep in mind here that in this quadrant, I'm exactly at 5.5. Five. If I go 90 degrees, you'll notice that there's kind of a pattern. This point right here is negative 5.5. Five. If I did another 90 degrees or 180 degrees from the original point, this is at negative 5, negative 5. And finally, this point right here. This is at 5, negative 5. So you'll start to see things like that. And I'm just going to move on so we can get into the actual shapes of them here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a nice check mark next to uh, understanding how to manipulate or transform images in three unique ways. So there are three unique ways. And I probably won't get through the patterns on this thing. Um, they won't be that crucial for the assignments. They're just they're things to look at and say how reflections can also be used to look at like translations and rotations. So we're going to do some more of that and some more of an expansion of this. OK, let's do another example of reflection. And let's do it with this triangle. And I'm going to use this triangle as an example for everything else from here on out. Let's, uh, let's reflect. Let's do another reflection across the x-axis. OK, so that means that, remember when we saw my picture, we can look at individual points. Maybe that'll help us. Let's say, let's, let's look at this point here. In fact, I can actually label these um, vertices. OK, so I have a point right here. And I want it to be reflected across here. Like if this were looking into a mirror, where would it end up over here? OK, so the best thing I can do here is if I clone this and automatically, because you know I have these tools, I can flip it and flip it up and down. OK, so here already is a mirror image, which is awesome. You know, I can say, OK, I already have a nice mirror image, but I have to flip it across this mirror right here. So I need to find those exact points. Well, so let's say that, and, and these points aren't exact anywhere, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, so let's call it like 8 and a half, right? This is 8 and a half and, I don't know, negative 3. OK, so if that point's 8 and a half, negative 3, this point right here, across here, I would want to have this at eight and a half and three, positive three, right? So when you plot these points, and again, you can't, you can't clone this on paper, but you're going to have to draw these points. You'd put eight and a half and three and say negative one and about what, negative 10 and <clears throat> um, maybe seven, negative 10, you know, or and yeah, yeah, seven, negative 10, whatever those points are. So this ends up being a direct result and a flipped image of what this reflection was over here. Okay, to save time, um, I'm just going to go and do one more example, trying to make it nice and brief. Let's flip it over this line. And this line is 
called y equals negative x. Okay, if I want to flip everything over here, first of all, you want to think of what your mirror image would look like. So I'm going to flip it two ways. I'm flip it left and right, and I'm going to flip it. Oops. I'm going to flip it up and down. Okay. Well, I shouldn't have done it with this one actually. <laughs> I'll do it with this one. Let's flip this one left and right as well. Okay. So flipping this over, where do we end up going? Where 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 are we looking at in the image? Oh, you know what? Maybe um, I wasn't supposed to do that. Let me rotate it. There we go. Okay. So now we're looking at this image here, and we're looking at everything flipped. So remember, take this draw straight to this line right here and draw straight out as well and where should it end up that's kind of what you're asking yourself and what you want to say is that well this line is a mirror image of this line or or how about the other way around this is a mirror image of that so if this is 10 units down and one unit over this point right here this should be 10 units over and and I'm going to assume that I know that's 10 I don't really know if it is this should be 10 units over and one unit up and then all the other points will follow. So you kind of say, okay, this is 10 units down and 7 units over. This will be 10 units over and 7 units up, or 6 units, or however many it is. And this ends up being your mirror image. So this is just a little brief segue into what reflections really are. And we'll talk about it more in detail. But you'll see things like that. And again, this line, this is y equals negative x. So that might give you a line you know, on a graph, and you might have to know how to graph it. Okay, let's do a translation using this triangle. Translation, like I said, pretty straightforward, and I'm just going to do one example here. Let's clone it. Let's, let's uh, shift this 7 units to the right and 10 units up. Okay, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units to the right, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units up. Eh, whereabouts. It's, it's, it's all right. Let's, let's put it there. Okay, so here was my original image. I did a translation. Um, let's say x plus 7. Um, let's, let's put it this way. x plus 7, y plus 10. All right, so they might have that. They might say, I want for every x value. It's not just the vertices, but that's what you'll put. It's, it's, it's even for this point right here. This point moved over 7 units, and it moved up 10 units. Okay, so that's really all a translation is. And, and for now, I'm going to leave it at that. And finally, a rotation. Now, this is where stuff gets really tricky because we talked about the circle thing, right? But we did it for an individual point. So let's use three points and, and look at those. So here I'm going to do a circle again. And uh, this time I'll use a broken line. I think that'll look better. And do that. And uh, let's use red. I'm going to do a circle, and I'm going to expand it. Okay? I'm going to expand it to these three points. This point right here is for one circle. This point right here has a second circle, and this point right here is the third circle. These are basically the distances away from the center. If I rotate this about the origin, this is kind of what I want to see. You know, I want to be able to rotate this so that let me group these together, so that all of them stay on their, um, all of them keep their, oops, all of them keep their same distance away from the center or from you know from the fixated point, whatever it is. So if I go and group these, okay, here's going to be rotation. Let's say I want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. All right, so here's my center here. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, and here's what the new image will look like. Okay, you see that rotation? So here's the important part, and I can, I can undo and redo and do stuff like that. All right, so here is my original image. Here it is rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So you'll notice that the triangle also rotates itself 90 degrees. And that's kind of the important thing to take home here. This point right here rotated down there. This point rotated up there, and this point up there. So you'll see that that rotation, all these rotated 90 degrees, and it rotated about the origin, which means every point is still the same distance away from the center as it originally was. And that's why I drew the circles. I also drew it so I could actually rotate the, this object. But so I rotated this 90 degrees, and it has these new points. And you have to say, well, what are they? 
So you'll notice, and you'll have to do 